And joining me now is the head coach of the women's Division II hockey team, Rena Leone. Rena, thanks for sitting down with us. Happy to be here. Rena, let's go back and to talk a little bit about your season so far that you were able to have because the team was coming off the heels of winning its first ever conference championship. So with the league breaking up now into three different regions, giving more opportunity for teams or equal playing field for teams to make it to nationals, that definitely increased your chances of going to – the national stage because I know that was what you guys were one of the big goals you were hoping for for this season so talk a little bit about the year you guys had yeah this season was um the season was fantastic we went undefeated in regular season play for the college hockey east which was um if you would have asked me last summer what I thought about this season I knew we were going to do well but I didn't think we were going to do that well so the girls worked their butts off they um came together as a team on the ice and just they proved that they deserve to go to nationals. Um, the two teams that we lost to were, they were great competitors. So it would have been great to be able to have gone on to nationals to be able to see kind of what the overall competition of the entire ACHA women's D2 was. Um, but it definitely gives, it fuels the fire, definitely gives us more um, determination to make it back again next year. So the new formatting did help. It just gave us more clarity of who was ranked um, and kind of we knew further out if we were even had a shot to make nationals where last year it kind of flip-flopped halfway through the season. So this way we knew what to expect and were able to kind of keep prepping for it. And, yeah, obviously, unfortunately, your season, like a lot of other teams, kind of came to a screeching halt with uh, the regulations and stipulations of COVID-19. Talk a little bit about just uh, having to be, unfortunately, the bearer of bad news and let your girls know and just how they've been able to handle that and uh, try to at least stay somewhat engaged preparing for next year. Yeah, what kind of stunk, though, was we um, went to the championship game in the College Hockey East playoffs and we lost in triple overtime. So that kind of was a stinger. And then to find out two weeks later that, oh, hey, we're not going to nationals. Um, this is going to sound bad, but all the girls were pretty much home for spring break because I was giving them a couple of days to kind of rest and recover and just have a, some away time from campus. So I sent an email out um, and then we had a conversation. So I was happy to not have them with me physically because I know a lot of emotions would have come up quickly where we were able to have conversations a couple hours after they had heard the news. So they were able to process it a little bit better. And then once we were able to talk as a team, like they understand that it stinks, but again, it's something we can't control. And if we can't control it, why are we going to worry about it? So again, yeah, it stinks. We were, it would have been four Liberty teams at nationals. It would have been a fantastic time, but at the end of the day, we want to keep everyone safe and healthy. Absolutely. But I mean, even with all that, and unfortunately, yeah, I, even though every a lot of seasons came to halt, this team still was able to be, have, as you touched on earlier, not only impressive year, but kind of make their mark in Liberty uh, women's h h hockey history. So talk a little bit about that, Mark, because it's a team that, as you said, went undefeated in the regular season, team that helped win a lot of those girls, helped win the first ever conference championship for this program. And then even more so, it's the second time ever that a team was able to qualify for nationals. Yeah, we were ended up being 14 and 5 for our regular season. Um, we had one of our girls hit over 100 points for the first time in, in team history. So it's just for a small bench, we had 13 players, so 12 skaters and a goalie. We were able to do so much. Um, a lot of passion and dedication was put into the season, but also like it was it was a team effort. All the girls were uplifting each other. If um, somebody was injured, they were on the bench making sure that they were pushing and motivating their girls, knowing that they were there to support them mentally then. So just throughout the season and even in the summer, a bunch of our girls are still in town. The bond that they have is unreal. I've never seen a team kind of stick together, not even in the team sense, but more they're just friends. So they're there to be with each other, to kind of rely on each other, um, which shows both on and off the ice, so it just gives a great team dynamic then. And speaking of team dynamics, obviously, let's move forward a little bit talking about the recruitment aspect because you do have some girls that potentially, uh, with everything happening, might come back, but still up in the air because, yeah, seniors, they do leave. But even more so, the recruitment thing has kind of changed a little bit for you because of the fact that, one, you can't get girls on campus, 
to take a look at the program, but even more so a lot of teams, their season ended. So when you would be going out to see teams compete in their tournaments, you can't really do that now. So talk a little bit about how the recruitment aspect has just changed for you and uh, trying to uh, talk to girls about the program. Right. Um, Luckily, this has happened to every team. So I don't feel that I'm alone. I've been able to communicate with some other coaches and kind of they're feeling the same thing where they, it's a lot of unknowns, um, a lot of reaching out via email and trying to connect with girls that way. There's a couple like recruiting websites where you can go and get information, but at the same time, like until you see that person, see that their personality, see how they play on the ice, you really don't know if they'll be a good fit. So it's, it's definitely been challenging. I had four tournaments set up to go recruiting after nationals. So our season or trying to kind of, get maybe a couple extra bodies kind of came to a halt. Um, But I feel like it's across the board where a lot of programs might have a rough year next year, just because of not being able to go out and talk to the players. Um, Some players might decide to stick to stick with their 19 U teams and play an additional year so they can get more exposure. Um, So right now it's definitely a source, not a sore subject, but it's hard because it's, you can only do so much where I'm a planner and much rather be able to like do x y and z where x y and z don't even exist right now so um ncaa just expanded their no recruiting or going and seeing players until july 31st so things just keep getting pushed back so it's hard to tell what our season's even going to look like next year so that's true yeah without the regulations of knowing when the potential season might even start all right um Well, Rena, thank you for some of the insight so far. I'm sure we'll touch base with you again just to get more of an update and um, uh, not just on uh, how things are progressing still and finding out more, but even more so about preparing for next year and seeing how that's going to to see when it will start. But once again, thanks for sitting down with us and uh, make sure you continue staying safe out there. Thanks, you too.